The following podcast has been rated R. You've been warned. My name is Aquabear. After the successful beginning of our podcast, I had a crossover with WROL, and I came back with only one goal, to raise up my game. In order to do so, I became someone else. I became something else. I became the Sugar Bear. And you're listening to Atlantis After Dark. Hello, hello, and welcome. You found your way to our humble little podcast. We appreciate you listening wherever you might have found us, now available almost everywhere you get your favorite podcasts, including Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, and right here on Spreaker. Don't forget to hurl a trident through that subscribe button so you never miss an episode, because we wouldn't want you to miss out on any of the exciting stuff We've got lined up for you in the future, and boy, do we have some exciting stuff. Um, Before we dive into the future, uh, I want to take a quick look at our last episode just briefly. Uh, The positive response that we got for our sirens was, in a word, phenomenal. I knew they would kill it. I knew our audience would love it, and the stats don't lie. That episode alone got us twice as many downloads and listens across all platforms in less than a week as the previous episode did not too, which is a testament to their hard work and dedication. And uh, we'd like to shovel our apologies over to hate mail. <laughs> he, they, they beat you, buddy. Um, it was such a positive response, in fact, that we're already planning on having them back after the new year. So thank you to everyone who loved that show. We had fun making it, and we look forward to bringing you more sirens in more episodes to come. Uh, on that same note, our future looks bright in more ways than one. Uh, I'd like to officially welcome Biff and Witty to the AAD creative team. Over the past month, those two have been killing it in terms of providing us with great content, bits, and segments. Um, I think their ideas really come from a point of view that mirrors what we're trying to accomplish on this show. And In fact, none of the bits or segments on this episode are written by yours truly or BF or Beatus or anybody. It was all Witty. Uh, It's all Biff and Witty today, which means I get to be the dumb guy behind the microphone. I love it. And uh, we'll touch more on that in just a little bit. But first, I want to introduce today's panel. All the way from the underwater speed force, he's so poor, he got married for the rice. It's our resident speedster, Black Flash. What's happening, dude? Hey, man. How you doing? I'm happy to fucking be here. I thought I lost my job after that last episode. (laughs) Well, you might have. You you, you might (laughs) have. You, You might still lose your job. Yeah, right. At least I got that rice. (laughs) <laughs> uh, was it minute rice ah i i think i think it cooked pretty fast but i was using a zippo and a tin can so <laughs> that doesn't Uncle sound Benz. like rice man <laughs> <laughs> Uncle <Benz. laughs> oh man uh so you heard him just there also joining us today his love for the ladies is like his diarrhea he can't hold it in it's your boy beat us how's it going today buddy that's 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 quite awful that, that is terrible. <laughs> terrible, 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 oh. terrible. Oh, man. He didn't deny it. That's right. He didn't deny it. Well, you can you know, always. Mex- Mexican last night. So, you know, yeah, let it flow, go. baby. Let it flow. <laughs> he said Mexican, not Mexican food. So, <laughs> oh, there he is. Speaking of which, I know it's been a long time trying to get you on here, and we certainly appreciate that you're taking some time to be with us today. On your birthday, no less. The one, the only, Beardly Beast. How are you, buddy? Doing great. Glad to be here. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity. No, we appreciate you having a. Uh, we appreciate you coming on the show. We love having new people on, and um, we are looking forward to doing this episode. Happy um, birthday! That's right, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, another year older. <laughs> <laughs> they just keep coming. Yeah. yeah, I know. Uh, Bat May turned um, a year older yesterday as well, and I know mine is coming up in about a month. So it seems to be the season. Tis the season for birthdays. So, so wait, what was nine months ago? Apparently, a lot of parents were fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Springtime. That's it. That's it. 
Yeah. Oh. Good old spring fling. Spring break. <laughs> spring fling. Yeah. It was about March, right? The March time frame. March, April. Yeah. Ooh, March Madness, baby. Or if you're a late baby, it could have been uh, Valentine's Day. Yeah. Uh-huh. Could have oh, been gross. that, too. <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> Why yeah, are we discussing think, when you were yeah. conceived? <laughs> I don't want to think about it anymore. <laughs> we're we're, we're no moving shame. on. It was conceived in the back of what? 1937 Ford Pinto. <laughs> when it was new. <laughs> when, the, when the bumper fell off. <laughs> when it was new. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, God. Conceived I'm so in old. the Model T, baby. <laughs> I was conceived in an alley, so you guys should be <laughs> grateful. Oh, you guys know it hurts to fucking laugh today. So thanks a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, before we get into the meat and potatoes to today's show, I, I wanted to bring up these uh, CW parody intros that Witty wrote for us. You heard mine at the opening of the show. Uh, I call that the Arrow Bear. They're so good. Uh, she made one for BF. Uh, so let's give that a listen real quick. Let's do it. I am Black Flash. I am the blackest Flash alive. To the outside world, I'm just a regular guy. But secretly, with the help of my friends at KOA, I beat the odds and climbed the boards in both raids and PvP. I am Black Flash. So you're the blackest Flash alive, huh? I am. I am. I even had to pay to do that parody, so I had a (laughs) shit contract, (laughs) man. Oh, Jesus. (laughs) A white dude doing Black Flash. Come on, come on. (laughs) Same. You're going to get canceled. Watch out. (laughs) <laughs> Your skin would beg to differ. Black oh like my, my heart. Karens are foaming at the mouth waiting to get to you now, buddy. Uh, send all complaints to the diabetes department. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and speaking of Betis, he was supposed to do a Legend of Tomorrow intro, but um, I, I think it was just a little too difficult to get just right. I mean, Rip Hunter is something, you know, very difficult to try and get uh, on the right par. So he made something a little bit different for us. And uh, he did his take on Batman 89, which I thought was great. Let's give that a listen. My parents were killed right in front of me. Not by a gun or a knife, but by a renegade criminal dressed in a Twinkie snack cake costume. From that moment on, I dedicated my life to protecting this city and its citizens from a similar fate. I prowl the night looking for and eating any Twinkie cake I can find. I may not be the hero this city needs, but I'm the hero this city deserves. I am obese. I have high blood pressure. I am the Beatus. So it was a killer Twinkie, huh? I'm eating a Twinkie right now. Is it a chocolate Twinkie or is it a regular Twinkie? Oh, it's a regular one. Why does it matter? Well, you <laughs> tell me. Twinkies matter. All... <laughs> oh, fucking Christ, man. <laughs> we're we're definitely going to get in trouble for this one, aren't we? Um, if it was Texas, it would be fried, and then the color wouldn't matter. That's right. Oh, that sounds that's delicious. Right. I know, Fuck man. Fried Texas. fucking Twinkie. I'm from, t- I hate the goddamn fair. Every year, my boy dragged me to the goddamn fair, and it's just fucking deep fried everything. Deep fried <laughs> ice cream, deep fried Snickers. Do you ever have deep cream. fried Coke? Deep fried batter. It's just yeah. deep fried bread. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Why is my like... hand fried? What? Your hand Why fried? Why is my hand Yeah, then you know they fry everything, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> oh, Te- man. Texans stop paying attention at some point, don't they? They just get on that fried train and <laughs> they get carried away. <laughs> Anybody see my kid? <laughs> <laughs> oh, He's my God. For the day. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> 
So, gents, um, I want to get into the show a little bit here. Um, the last raid of the year is over. And I know for me, it's somewhat bittersweet. I, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to relaxing at the end of this month, especially around the holidays, uh, even though they did raids during Thanksgiving in America. Uh, I always get burnt out right around day three, uh, but I'm going to miss some of those rewards and being able to level up my lost 17 tunes now. Uh, the guild did another amazing and exceptional job. Uh, once again, we quit while we were ahead. And once again, the Owls broke the game with their negative score. And I just want to put out there, they had a negative score, as did the Guardians. So we are the top alliance with a positive score. So I'm putting our stake in it right now. Kingdom of Atlantis won that raid. Damn straight. Yeah, we didn't break anything. That's not how it works at all. <laughs> hey, it's not our fault they decided to go backwards. That's right. And it's funny because I just listened to the latest episode of WROL, which was actually recorded before the raids. Uh, and Hate did say if there was ever a time you wanted to beat the Owls, you know, this would be the month to do it with everybody being off for Thanksgiving. So I think it's fair. I, I think we did. There you go. We won. We were the, the top positive team left. We were. Suck it. I'm going to go get the <laughs> yeah. tattoo right now. Fucking November a. raids, KOA. <laughs> Only time this year you wanted to be positive of anything. <laughs> Damn right. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. BF, can you break the raid numbers down for us, buddy? I can. The uh, Great Kingdom of Atlantis finished in third place with a great performance, as always. First. And that was with... Our, yeah, yes, yes, first. First, <clears throat> third. Um, with our day three break, which was great. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you guys. It's nice to take that slack off on that day oh, three and focus yes. on solos. And yes. Zebel, Zebel, they're just, they're crazy. What can you say about Zebel? Zebel came in in ninth, and it was a tough raid. Top 10 finishing alliances all the way down the board broke a billion points, which is nothing to shake a finger at at I all. Oh, it's insane, right? Yes, very insane. I think the uh, leader of the fishermen should uh, give a rundown of his, uh, <laughs> Alliance's performance for us if he wants to. Oh God! What, what do you think of the fisherman to, there? Way to put me on the spot. Um, well, you know we we were in the twenties on the beginning of day four, and uh, you know we kind of slowed down because we thought that we had obviously the top fifty, you know, secured, and we we did. We finished what was it forty fourth, forty fourth, forty fourth? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we we dropped quite a bit, but you know, given the uh, conundrum of how they assort raid rewards you know anybody from what 20 to 50 all gets the same so mm -hmm. either way we are happy and uh, i'm really proud of everybody yeah i agree you guys did great you've done great every raid i believe you finished what top 50 every raid yeah we get carried by uh, a select few of our guys and uh you know we all reap the rewards so thanks to them right and no way teamwork makes the dream work but <laughs> extra bonus to, i guess to them right absolutely <laughs> participation award right right and then uh brian brian even finished top 100 so all of the alliances were in the top 100 two in top 10 i couldn't be happier with the uh family the atlanteans all together coming into existence what uh what was it october august yeah. september yeah and uh we finished strong we finished the year out strong break time i'm tired yeah way to finish strong Brian, you finished the raid. Congratulations. You did something, <laughs> I think. <laughs> oh, man. Coming from the guy oh. who didn't even play day one. I don't ever. Hey, that's not my fault. Did you not play I, on day one, Venus? I don't ever play day one. He, really? he takes naps. You know, I hate the reason I used to play World of Warcraft all the time. And the reason I quit is I got tired of you always had to be somewhere at a certain time. Yeah. And that was like three, four times a week. I had to sit in front of my computer at the exact same time for a couple hours. And the reason I'm drawn to mobile games is you get to play whenever you want. Wherever you want. So kind of when we when we switched to, you know, whatever, scheduled times, whatever, I dropped from Maine to Zebel just so I could. I still put in the numbers. I just don't like being forced to play, which is weird because I end up playing more anyway. But it's like, you know, to me, priority, I would rather, I don't know, go mow the lawn or 
fold my laundry. Well, Jesus, so, you make you, you make me feel like a, <laughs> a tyrant now. You are forced to play, sir. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you're not for people agree to it and stuff. Uh, you know, like Twin City Legend, he's like, give me more, give me more. Who's got extra <laughs> hours? I'll take them all. And I'm like the opposite where take them all. I don't want to do anything. <laughs> but I'm not lazy. You. I do I don't what blame I'm you. supposed to do. <laughs> they they want it so much monotonous tapping sometimes. It's like I don't know. You you almost wish you could play in your sleep. Get one of those little water pecker <laughs> right? bird That's things. I need, from the I, need, just... I need I need a pecker to tap my phone. <laughs> I bet you do. I'm sure they sell those somewhere. <laughs> Anybody knows where where uh, Beatus can find a pecker? DM them on uh, Discord, please. I think that's a problem. I wonder if I could hire some Asian people. Wait, is that racist? Probably. They always do stuff. We we you know we send all our jobs and stuff over there. To me, you know, raids feel like a job. Let me send it to someone. They need a bowl <laughs> of rice to eat. I want a top five hundred. It works out. Is a guy without a pecker a guy? <laughs> a guy oh. gardener. <laughs> oh, see, now we're getting into what considered trans and stuff, and that's not cool, man. <laughs> oh, my God. We're going off the rails. <laughs> Bear's already finished. He's like, I can't even. Sucks. <laughs> I can't even today. What a fucking episode this is going to be, right? Oh, oh, my God. Oh, man. And, well, I do have to say, it is going to be the last episode, last regular episode of the year. We'll get into that in just a little bit, but... Uh, um. I did want to play this bit. Merle is back, and he did want some time to rant about the skin sales this month. Let's see what he has to say. Howdy, folks. Merle Nelson here, and today I'd like to talk to you about them skins. Now, we all know they don't add any particular skills, but it sure feels good going into battle with a shiny new armor. Well... If you're not playing Sinestro, that is. Now, I don't know about you folks, but for me, he kind of looks like that weird-looking uncle everybody tries to stay away from at family dinners. And no, I'm not one to make assumptions, but if you ended up purchasing that skin, there's a good chance you probably are that uncle. Hopefully, you're a straight shooter like your old pal Merle and skip that sale altogether. Better wait for another Superman skin. Maybe they'll get it right next time. Until we cross paths again, this is Merle Nelson saying, Have a good night and a better tomorrow. We'll see y'all on down the road. I mean, dude isn't wrong. Uh, That look is all wrong for him. I I still think it looks better than Sinestro's legendary Yellow Lantern skin. That shit looks terrible. (laughs) You talk about the Kool-Aid man. (laughs) Yeah, the Kool-Aid man. Hey, Kool-Aid! (laughs) <laughs> yeah, fucking terrible. Yeah. You know, I think that's one of the first skins I didn't buy. I usually always buy them. And I actually almost bought this one because I was 80 hard short of like L2 for Beast Boy. Oh, yeah. But I oh, bought... Yeah five of those damn packs you know the starter packs that keep going up and up in price and i went all the way up to 4k gems and i never got it's these so toys. red like they, they could have skin. toned it down just a like little bit i never would have used it mm-hmm. yeah yeah it looks a little bit better actually like in game like during the yeah. match is when it looks the best obviously yeah, i, I bought it at i'm point. admitting <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he's Jesus, Beast Boy. He man. turned into animal. Not a new uh, one either. He turned into a ten. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Let's, that's that's as good a segue as I think we're going to get today. Uh, <laughs> um, Beast, I want to turn it over to you really quick. You had uh, a good idea about how to revamp the uh, always terrible PvP uh, boards here. Um, I know this is something that will probably never get fixed but I think there are definitely improvements that could be made. I want to get your take on the PvP. Maybe instead of a character rework, we can talk about reworking certain aspects of the game. Yeah, I mean, we all know that, you know, I don't want to say it because we enjoy the game, we enjoy the community, but certain aspects of the game are getting stale. Um, And not necessarily to revamp PvP, but 
put more aspects of it into it because you know with the prominence of multiplayer games the fact that we can't have a real time you know player to player pvp mode is kind of frustrating and, and you know and i've i brought the topic to reddit in even discord and, and people have shunned the idea but i've I've thought it over for quite a bit and thought, you know, and I've talked to other people about this, you know, if it's something where it's just player to player in real time, you know, you can do intra squad, take all the rewards away, just give us the ability to play our friends, to talk shit, you know, intra squad within each Alliance. Um, And then from that, the way that you could actually make it have rewards without, people being able to exploit it is make it like a bracket style something that you have to sign up for and you're placed against random people you don't even know who you're going against and you go through this bracket and as you proceed through the bracket if you stay in it you earn more and more rewards and i think that would be a nice incentive for people to come back to the pvp mode with a a fresh idea and, and really enjoy it Right, right. I think that's a pretty good idea, actually. Um, giving people the option to um, pick and choose uh, either their friends, teammates, or alliance mates, or whomever, you know, that could be a really good addition to the game. Yeah, I mean, you know, and it would also be nice to be able to try a team out against specific characters. And, and oh, I yeah. don't know if the devs do that on purpose so that it, it kind of, you know, keeps the mystique of having to do it in real time and just figure shit out as you go. But it, it gets frustrating when you come across that one team on your board that you can't just figure out how to beat and you're wasting all of your PVP energy to, to beat them. So, well, you're making assumptions that the devs are doing something positive on purpose. So nothing against the devs. We love the devs. We love you guys. Yes. WB Reeves, please come on. All two of you. We love both of y'all. Both both of you. All two of you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, WB Reeves, where are you? Dude, to me, that's honestly, that's one of the only times I have fun in PvP is when I come across a team I can't beat. Yeah. Because it so rarely happens to me now. I mean, that's Mm -hmm. not humble brag or nothing, but it is. It sucks for me (laughs) because I'm at the point I've progressed so far that my PvP board is nothing but six points. So for Wrath, I get 1,500, top 1,500, easy, no problem. But I used to get top 100, no problem. Spinning minimal, like maybe an extra 600 on PvP energy, where now if I want top 100, it it costs me like 3,000 energy or 3,000 gems. And it's just a pain in the ass that I'm basically penalized for playing the game. And I know that happens, you know, for like the whales up there, like, the, the owls and, and TLC and people like that, that spend it a, a bunch for them. It's even worse because, you know, before I used to get twenties all the time and I'd still win no problem. But now I shit you not. My last board was six all the way through the board after that I had one nine. And then I got all sixes again. So it doesn't even benefit me to, you know, like refresh boards and look for twenties. Cause all I'm going to do is keep refreshing and getting sixes. So I might as well just yeah. clear my boards and, Yet it gives me stripe shards this month, which I guess I kind of need because I barely had any at all. But I mean, it sucks when I want top 10 like or top 100 like this one I do because I like the gorilla dude. So <laughs> I don't, the way I want the, them to fix that is, you know how we have like the gym blitz. Every star counts as three. Yeah. Just do it like that. And then I don't get penalized, you know, for someone that has – a lower roster than me always get like twenties and twelves and nines and all I'm getting is sixes. So right. That's the only way I think they could fix I guess the issue that top rosters have is to just make one star worth three points. But I would love if they had like a live action PvP. Uh I played it in another game and their issue was it was a smaller game, so their servers were awful. So lag and disconnects were just a huge issue. I don't know what capabilities Marvel or Marvel. Oh, wow. War, Warner Dang. brother has right. That Warner brother <laughs> has because dude, like we know the dev team is small. We know this money doesn't make, or this game doesn't make a whole lot of money. So I don't know what they're willing to sink in to make it better. I was actually disappointed when Warner brother decided not to sell this game off. 
because I was hoping like a new company would come in and because you know DC it's a huge IP. So I was hoping yeah. they would come in, sink some new money into the game, and maybe we would get like live PvP servers. Maybe we would get that fucking coming soon chapter nine that's been coming soon for like three years. Warner Brother has no fucking clue what coming soon means. That's all I'll say. Yeah, yeah. And we'll, we'll, we're going to get into the coming soon thing here shortly. So do you have anything else to to add, BF? Yeah, I like the thought of the even stars across the board doing the 333. Three. And right. I, the other thought I was thinking of when uh, Beatus was talking about it there, the bonus tunes that they put for the uh, uh, the alliance standings or whatever it is, how they have the plus five, plus two have those transfer over into Wraith as well. So it actually helps the people with the better uh, rosters as opposed to penalizing them. You know, they can get extra. Yeah. Just like they do with this energy blitz. How, what is it? Miss M Indigo one. They, they have the extra trophy count or whatever they could do oh, the yeah, same thing yeah. over there in Wraith. Mm-hmm. And I honestly love the idea of the uh, inner Alliance, like free to play battleground or whatever. I mean, come on, there's there's people in every alliance out there. You would love to beat the hell out of your teammate, <laughs> Trench Abyss. Um, <laughs> I, I would be attacking him all the time. <laughs> Even though I literally just bitched about it, in the defense of the current PvP system, the one aspect I do like is it helps smaller rosters catch up. Because yeah. it's easier for them to get in the higher rankings, they get more shards. Because I know if we switched it to three stars across the board or add bonus tunes for larger rosters, what's going to happen is the rich get richer. Yeah. So in a way, I get the system, but as one of the richers, I hate it. (laughs) Well, you really have to try hard, uh, you know, to use that term, if you are underpowered to stay where you are. Because even Wraith with the set schedule of reward characters, you know, being the reworks and then the previous month's tunes... I mean, on those last couple of days, just like in a siege, it gets really sweaty, and yeah. your your rank will fall hundreds if you're not continuously playing on that last day. Yep, that's when all the cannons are firing, and everybody's go- gunning yep. for that final placement. Dude, I remember Artemis Blitz cost me nine thousand gems to stay in the top thirty-five. Wow, it was yeah. by far the most I've ever had to spend to rank, but. That made me realize for popular characters like that, like the Asriel Blitz, I didn't even try for top 100 because it's cheaper for me to just spend 8,000 gems and buy like a pack 100 than it is for me to spend, you know, 9,000 and try to get that extra 105 gems from, you know, between 1,500 and 100. What I would like to see is an expansion of the reward bracket. Because why the hell is it just top 100 and then bam, all the way to 15? You could fit in easily another like two more tiers or something. Yes, that's very frustrating. It it really gives you zero incentive to go from 1,500, 200 if you're not trying to spend an absurd amount of gems depending on the character. So it almost seems like a money grab. Or a stop block and they don't even realize it. They have so many people who would probably proceed if there was another two tears in there but they just quit True. because hey you yeah. know i'm safe Dude, to me hands down the worst reward system is the alliance weekly crap yeah because <laughs> i mean unless you get first there's no there's barely any difference between anything else it just doesn't matter like even because you get forty thousand for first and then you get what 10 16 or, and an eight yeah so the 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 amount of gems you would spend to get to like top ten, it more than makes up for the difference between you know top ten and top whatever one hundred. Mm-hmm. So I would like to see. I don't know what they can add. Maybe there's like a little gem bonus or something else. Yeah, but the current the to me there's just no reason to push for alliance weekly rankings ever. It's just a pure waste of gems and it's a pure. I don't know. Circle jerk. Hey, look at me. I top 10. Good for you. You're an idiot. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. You're an idiot. No doubt. And the, o- the only thing you actually get from it is those little alliance currencies or whatever. So you have a few characters you can farm. But other than that, you're right. Uh, a gem bonus, yeah. something, something to spice it up a little bit, make people actually want to work for it. 
what I find funny is like most of the alliances that always get, you know, KOA usually gets top 10 and stuff like that by, you know, the pushing of some of its members like TLC. But if you've ever looked at TLC's account, I don't know, he has like a, a billion alliance energy or those <laughs> alliance tokens. So it, he doesn't even need it. Right. What right. I think would be cool is a selector token. What I mean by that first place gets, I don't know, 30, uh, two through 10 gets 10, uh, 11 through 50 gets 15. And then all the way to hundred gets 10 and whatever. But what I mean by a selector token is it's a token you can use to select any shards you want of any character that's been in the game longer than a month. Yeah. That'd be awesome. It's yeah. not enough to break the game but it's enough to help you farm the unfarmables because they're not going to give us chapter nine. And I don't understand why Hal Jordan needs like fucking 50 nodes where there's so many characters, you have no way to get them. Right. And everybody has that character that they're sitting there that they need one shard for six shards for. Right. I don't, (laughs) I I don't need any of that. Kiara (laughs) would love this system. She's been sitting on two shards away from like rebirth uh, no, red one. hood for months yeah. and she just can't get it. She's hoping for those, you know, two little free shards you get from the damn videos, but. Or somebody yeah. with that's like eight shards shy of a uh, rebirth one Roz. Could you imagine yeah. that? That, <laughs> that would be terrible. Wouldn't it? Dude, even if it's not, I know, I know what you're talking about, <laughs> but even <laughs> if it's not like, even if they wouldn't let you select it, even if it was still like a random hard to get character, as in a random character that you can't farm, that would still help tons of people out. I mean, yes, because yeah. now, dude, it's the shop or it's nothing. It would eliminate the the uh, I guess the overflow of a certain character being used after they have like a six day event, like Constantine. He was so rare before this event, and now you fucking see him everywhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. I mean, it, it kind of sounds like an expanded version of the Tap Joy video watching thing where you get the two random shards, uh, but it's more of a control your own destiny as opposed to yeah. just them I mean, picking even if for it you. wasn't. I mean, I'm just, it sucks when you really like a character. All right. My favorite character is Doomsday. Since Thanks. as long as I've been playing, he had one event and no sale. He recently had a sale. It was complete horse shit. It was like 50 gems for like, I don't know, 600 or what was it? 40 shards for 650 gems or some shit like that. It was terrible value. And what did I do? I sunk like 60,000 gems into that shitty ass offer. So I can rebirth to a character that is absolute dog shit just because he's my favorite. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but what I'm saying is to rely, I, dude, I pounced on that offer for the sole reason that I've been playing for almost two years, uh, maybe a year and a half, and I've never seen him in the shop. So he was in the shop and I was like, yeah, I'm going to get this. I'm going to level this dude because I don't know when I'll ever see him again. And for me, the same thing happened with Superboy. I didn't have him unlocked. He came in the shop. Boom. I spent like 50,000 or something. I got him to L5 and I love that dude. That dude is amazing. But it just sucks waiting on a character and the only way to get him is to pray he hops in the shop and that just yeah. sucks. I mean, and you could be thinking in advance, you know, uh, I know he's already had a rework, but you know, you could, you could hope for a better one in the future, I guess. Oh, dude, I, I hope they fix him because it pisses me off. Dude, Doomsday. Everyone knows who Doomsday is. He's badass. He's fucking unstoppable. He killed Superman. And then, Arcus fucking ramps up in like one turn. I'm pretty sure the DC devs killed Superman. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Multiple times. As much as I love to listen to you guys talk about this, I I, I gotta cut it short a little bit. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, Beardly Beast here. Uh, For those of you who aren't in the know, he is the drummer for the Augurist Complex, which I've had the pleasure of listening to. And um, I got to say, I'm a huge fan of groove metal. Uh, I dig it. That's what it reminds me of. It's sort of like a cross between groove and death metal. And I think his drumming is just fucking insane. Um, And we're always, you know, no, thank you, man. Because we're always happy to be able to share the many talents of our fellow guild members. 
and uh, I'm really happy that I get to play this on Atlantis After Dark. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this break is sponsored by the Augurist Complex with their song, I Invective. Come on back. This is KOA Breaking News. News anchor Hugh Bradstone here with a quick report. Guy Gardner will be replacing Ginger Spice for a much-awaited Spice Girls holiday reunion. Back to you. We now return you to your regularly scheduled broadcast, already in progress. And now, for the second half of Atlantis After Dark. It's the Atlantis After Dark End of Year Awards. All right, 
Thanks, you. Okay, okay. And uh, thank you, everyone. Welcome to the end of year awards segment. We'll be covering the best and worst of DCL from January to December, controversy and all. So buckle your seatbelts, kids. I'm excited to do this. Are you guys? Hell yeah. Absolutely. Fucking A, man. Let's do it. Okay, so without further ado, let's just hop right into it. Um, category one for us was best new release. Um, I'll take it around the horn. BF. <laughs> um, the first one that comes off the top of my head, Asriel. Yeah. He, yeah. He's a monster. I, I really enjoy Cersei and Artemis as well. Even, even okay. Blackhand, but I'll leave Asriel at the top. <laughs> Beast. BF going with the obvious choices there. I wanted to go with somebody that you can really plug and play into a lot of different teams. And that's why I chose uh, Black Mask. Mm. Uh, you know, just with the the different effects that he has and the uh, the taunt call assist and even the call assist on his basic. I think those are really enjoyable. And the fact that if you kill anybody on his team, you know, especially if he's with Cersei, uh, he just becomes a monster. I mean, he he pretty much renders the enemy team just completely useless. And the more you kill his teammates, the more he stacks those debuffs. And I just feel like that is hugely beneficial for players that are still growing their roster and are trying to beat those higher level opponents. Yeah, yeah. Beat us. Well, Asriel's hands down the easiest choice. Oh, yeah. But... Before he came out, I literally had a three-way tie between Cersei, Dead Man, and somebody else that I just forgot. Artemis. Artemis, yeah. Uh, <laughs> dude, Artemis is fucking fantastic. I love her is. AOE, you know, uh, death, what, death immunity? Heal immunity. Yes. Heal, um, heal, yeah. Dude, she stacks shields. Uh, she 100% crit after like two turns. She had so much crit, and it was insane. Dead man, dude, I loved him to death mm -hmm. until literally the month after he came out. They said, Oh, always invisible. Here, here's Azrael. And then yep. Dead Man's stock kind of dropped. So I was kind of disappointed in that. But beyond <laughs> that, one character I use probably the most is Cersei because I have one team that I really like to run that's Martian Manhunter, uh, Killer Frost, Hawk Girl, and Cersei. And Cersei, if you're going to lose, Cersei can just turn it around for you. Oh, you lost two characters? Bam, they're alive. Bam, damage immunity. Bam, they're back in the game. So if you select the right characters like Asriel, if he comes back to life with permanent enrage, and then, you know, other teams start getting hit, and he just goes ape shit again, dude, Cersei's, she's magical. Magical. Yeah, yeah. Okay, best rework. Uh, let's go back around the other way. Beat us. What do you think the best rework was this year? Uh, I'm going to go with the obvious choice. Pure popular. I see him on every board. Martian Manhunter. Yeah. He went from barely being used to now that bastards on my board four or six out of 10 all the time. And if it's not him, it's cheetah to me. They're almost like one a and one B it's hard to tell them apart because they basically do the same thing in different ways, but it has to be Manhunter and Cheetah. Even though yeah. for me, honorable mention is Raz because I love using Raz al Ghul. Yeah. Beast, you got anything to add to that? Uh, you know, there was a lot of great reworks this year. There are some big obvious choices, but for me personally, I really appreciate it and like that they reworked Solomon Grundy. He's always been a personal favorite of mine, and I have won so many matches with him being the only character left alive that I had no business winning. So for me, he's my number one. What about you, uh, BF? Honestly, I can't mention anything other than Martian Manhunter. I don't think I've ever used a rework as much as him. So yeah, they, they, he's awesome. He protects your team right out the gate. Love the Definitely. guy. He makes everybody else a lot faster. What was it? A uh, fifteen percent oh, yeah. turn meter up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, definitely. It's uh, a beautiful kit that guy has. <laughs> yes, indeed, it is. Uh, let's talk about the best skin. Um, I'm going to start this one off. I'll say Superman Red Sun 
for about two days? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but seriously, um, Beast, what do you think the best skin was? Uh, for me, I got to go with the boy James Bald, Lex Luthor. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, just nice, sleek suit, simple, and, you know, it's not too out there. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Beatus? Oh, easily again, uh, Blue Flash. Why? Because he crashed raids and everybody won at top 500. <laughs> he looks pretty sleek. Unfortunately, mine's only L3, so I really don't get to use him that much. But his animations are all blue and they're all cool and shit like that. So besides, you know, the Superman Red Sun for three days, definitely Blue Flash. Yeah. BF? My personal favorite's Martian Manhunter again. Oh, the uh, Black Lantern skin? Yeah, I love that one. Yeah. I don't know why. Uh, that was one of the few that I've bought him and Kool Aid Man, but uh, <laughs> we'll get to that later. But uh, yeah. yeah, that Martian Manhunter one, I don't know. I like it, even though he almost looks identical to Dead Man, but kind of, yeah, <laughs> yeah, kind of. Uh, okay. This next one, yeah, we're going to cover debacle of the year, and this has potential to be controversial. So, um, I want to open it up to, um, you uh bf what do you think the debacle of the year is and i think we're all going to be in uh, pretty much agreement on this one our girl kitty man why are you always fucking with kitty yeah yeah that's uh it's very unfortunate yeah yeah the uh the outreach by uh wb to step into a reddit thread and essentially tell her be gone because of something she posted a cosplay picture that has i don't know it really doesn't have anything to do with what they're in charge of and i i don't know that's my thoughts on it i thought it was yeah. pretty shitty pretty shitty yeah. pretty backhanded of them well allow me to play devil's advocate for a second this is gonna be an unpopular opinion but karen's a bitch and she's got nothing better else to do and i hate that bitch <laughs> it's all her fault <laughs> fucking karen goddamn karen's <laughs> running around the internet looking for problems that aren't there all right so maybe i mean the, maybe it's not that unpopular opinion but karen sucks <laughs> but was it really a karen i mean I, I guess i'm trying to get to the bottom of it and i don't know that anybody ever did so hey i talked to the mexicans me and the mexicans conversed the mexican community was fine <laughs> we were we were excited and then Karen came by and said that we're offended and we're going to cancel shit because that's what Karen does. Yeah. <laughs> Beast. No comment. No comment. <laughs> I mean, not not to disagree or agree with any of you guys, but, uh, you know, to me, it's a fucking game. Can we just play the game and leave politics and, and all that shit out of it? Yeah, that's why I had a backup debacle of the year, too, which was... Same. Superman skin. <laughs> Superman skin was a debacle. That's for I damn mean, sure. They they paid out 10k gems. That's that's a lot. It is. Uh, you know, to everybody in the top 500. To me, a uh, business wise, that was their debacle of the year. You know, that's yeah. I, I mean, great. It's coding. It doesn't cost them anything. But <laughs> I love that skin so much. And then yeah. you know what happened? Goddamn fucking Karen came back and fucked that shit up for me again. <laughs> Complained Glenn about Karen. his little Russian tags and copyright She's, and all this other bullshit. Karen's <laughs> everywhere, man. Um, yeah, and, and I would say, like, the worst in-game debacle for me would have been the MVP points removal. I mean, halfway through the raid, what the fucking fuck? Yeah. Uh, you know, what a bullshit move. What a but, chump move. But that got reversed. It did. Well, it, it got reversed, but did anybody get comped for it? No. No. There you go. <laughs> they said sorry. Isn't that enough? Oh, yeah. They didn't say sorry with 10,000 fucking gems. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying, at least that got reversed, whereas Superman still looks like he's a party city ripoff at a fucking kid's party. I'm like, this is terrible. You might as well just give him like some fucking red underwear and a beach towel around his head. This is stupid. <laughs> yeah. So I, and I, I want to jump back for a little bit because... I, this has been on my mind ever since it happened. I know we called Kitty's ban, you know, uh, debacle of the year, and I suppose you could make a strong case for that. 
Um, I'm reminded of a saying, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. At some point, the act of preemptive moderation or censorship has and will have negative consequences. And more often than not, something like that gets in the way of discourse instead of fostering a healthy discussion. Um, I think it's just as divisive and ugly as the reason for the censorship to begin with, and it never solves anything. And I think that's where any of this cancel culture leads. It's not pretty. Uh, The problem with an eye for an eye is that it leaves everyone blind. And um, Kitty is one of us. And that's what I'll say on the matter. Well said, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Sometimes, sometimes I have a wise moment. And it's gone. The beard. (laughs) And it's (laughs) gone. gone. (laughs) That's right, man. Uh, let's talk about the, new, the the worst new release. Uh, I think this is probably going to be unanimous. Is it Adam? Ooh. I am torn 100. between Adam and Vandal Savage. Yeah, Vandal Savage is a shithead too. I mean, I didn't level either one because they were so bad. Yeah. But Adam yeah. was at times five and I didn't level him. So I guess I have to lean towards Adam. Vandal was yeah. just times yeah. three and he was garbage. Yeah. I mean, the difference with Vandal is that, one, he was free. So, it, you know, it was easier. He's more readily available. And he actually can do damage. His kit just sucks. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have to pick Adam because, unfortunately, I did gear him because Ooh. he was a five-time. And not only did I gear him because he was a five-time, I stopped using him for Harley Quinn quite vexing <laughs> instead. <laughs> So I got a grudge against Adam, this small little prick. I am happy Adam sucked because, as you know, <laughs> my only Rebirth 5 character is Shazam. And I was like, here comes this motherfucker. He's just going to one-shot him all the time. But nobody leveled him because he's fucking ash garbage. <laughs> so I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that worked out in your favor. Definitely, definitely. Um. Who was the worst? I know my worst rework. Um, who was the worst rework of the year? Superman. Again. <laughs> That's mine. That's Superman. What about it, BF? Honestly, if we're going to say worst, they're kind of on par with each other. I slightly agree with you guys on Superman, but also John Stewart. But the mm. reason I would probably boost John Stewart is Superman can be annoying i mean yes. he can he can win you a match if depending on who's fighting you john stewart he's just gonna stand there you know he's not gonna do anything <laughs> so he's i, well, I, I know, target practice he can be annoying too if he keeps procking that uh shield and his death immunity yeah yeah because you gotta remember his death immunity lasts three turns so if you don't Fuck have a yeah. purger I mean, he does massive damage when he's below 50% health. He has three turns of death immunity. By no means am I saying he's an amazing character, but he's serviceable. I would say more so than Superman, whereas Superman is just so annoying and so worthless. But they put Black Hand out. They they made Black Hand with his rework, which essentially says, fuck your death immunity. Get out of my way. (laughs) Well, then you could say Power Girl, Superman, Ark. You could say all them suck. Because yeah. black hands out. Yeah. 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 No, you're right. You're right. You just yeah. think they would retool a, a rework to go against the tune that it's coming out with, you know, not have it be a direct. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think that was mainly an Arcus counter, which I'm not going to lie. I kind of dig black hand. He's just fucking one shot and stuff with his remote control basic. Yeah. Like you don't even see that shit go off. This is like a butt. Pew! What happened? oh my god who is the most under oh go sorry hold on this i i I guess you can't count it as a rework but a character that got reworked really quick that kind of went from shit that could have been on this list of who's bad specter he oh, immediately yeah. got a, a change within like the first week that took him from like shit to awesome. And now, dude, he, he fucking AOE murders people. Oh, I mean, yeah. So they yeah. fixed him pretty quick. I know he's not on the list, but you know, honorable mention, Spectre, he kind of did shit. No, definitely. 
No, he's awesome. I actually just farmed the hell out of him with the board clear reward. Yeah. I got him halfway to L5 now. Was that most underrated? That that was an honorable mention, I think. Um, well, that okay. was an that honorable was mention rework. for... No, his yeah. was good rework, but I guess you can't count him as a rework because he wasn't a rework. He <laughs> was think... new, <laughs> yeah. and he was <laughs> shit, fixed. and then they fixed him like in a week. I think but Beatus no... was just excited. There's no category for best fixed character in a week. No, no, there isn't. <laughs> Usually they go the other way. <laughs> I, I'm just surprised they left Azrael alone. I for sure thought he was going to get fixed. fixed. He was oh. get nerfed? Yeah. Nerfed, yeah. Yeah. The tears were oh. getting deep. Yeah. Thank goodness they didn't. They gave him the Wonder Girl treatment in, in some respects. Okay. Who do we think was the worst skin is this even a, a contest? It's, it's <laughs> nope. Beast Boy, right? It's Kool-Aid Man. Hey, hey. I feel ashamed <laughs> to have my name associated with him. <laughs> it's, it, yeah, dude, it's got to be Tampon Boy, man. It has yeah, to be. Yeah. I mean, that burnt toast, as Beatus called it, Superman Red Sunskin isn't great, but at least they gave us 10,000 gems for that shit. Well, so, I, did, they give him, did they give him an extra tooth? Because his green skin only has that one exposed tooth. <laughs> I don't so know. they made him run and gave him a tooth. <laughs> he straight up looks like the end. I, I just think it's dumb that he straight up looks like the end of the movie Carrie now. It's just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. So we so we got burnt toast and Kotex, huh? That's where that's what they left us with. <laughs> BF, what do you think? Yeah, what do you think is the most underrated uh, character there, BF? Uh, most underrated. I don't, you guys don't want to hear me talk about Metallo, but he really, <laughs> I don't know. I, I personally felt he was underrated slightly. I mean, yeah, he is squishy as fuck, but I, I, I had a weird roster at the time he came out and that cheetah rework happened at the same time. So he really, uh, protected my biscuit there for a minute. Mm-hmm. And, uh, the only other one I would say, which I may be stealing from Beatus, So hopefully he doesn't stab me is a uh, specter. I, I agree one hundred percent on Spectre. He's nobody gives him the time of day and he is awesome. Yeah, he is. What about it, Beatus? Hold on. Did he just say I know he's squishy when his job is to be a tank <laughs> and not squishy? Yes, he So did. in the same sentence he said this guy is dog shit, but he's underrated dog shit. Is That's that, right. Is that what I got? Well, I suppose you can be underrated dog shit. I, there's nothing I will against say that. this. For the raid, he was actually viable. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he did a good job. Yes. It was probably his shining moment. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, if you want to call it that. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Beast? Uh, for me, it would be Kilowog. Uh, his basic oh. purges, you know, two, two buffs from the enemy, and he can kind of control a board pretty well with his aoe um and he's actually really fast too so i i I really love that about him nice nice beatus you have anything to add to that buddy recently for me clayface has changed my game currently everyone's using cheetah and martian manhunter and clayface has been amazing for me because with the taunts and agility up he can't be dispelled by either uh, Martian Manhunter doing his hammer down crap or, you know, uh, Cheetah doing her stuff. So he lets me survive the entire round one because I'm kind of tired of playing the speed meta that everyone else is playing. So I tried to build teams that last round one. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I never really saw Clayface before that. And I still almost never see him on my board. So that's the only reason I'm going to go with him being underrated but I absolutely love this dude and he has changed the game for me. And if you're looking for a good combo, you go Clayface, and you go Asriel and you watch Asriel murder everything before you take a turn. Nice. I, I want to try that. My, my Clayface sucks, but I'm hoping to get him up Understood. there because he's a freebie. Dude, mine was L2. Right. Completely changed my game just at L2. I just got him to L3 right now, but I'm telling you at L2, he is 1000% viable. And the thing I like about him most is his passive, unlike Revivers, mm-hmm. his passive is he doesn't die. So when you're doing, you know, wrath matches and shit, since he doesn't die, you don't lose a star. Right. 
So for me, round one, he'll always, he won't die because how his passive works when everyone else is invisible, he has blah, 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 chance to not die. Mm -hmm. And since everyone's invisible on the first turn, he won't die round one. And he's just been amazing for me. And I really like that guy. Highly recommend it. He won't die, period. It's kind of fun to watch Arcus's double tap just bounce off him, make him look like a tickle fight. <laughs> tickle fight. I love it. <laughs> um, so last up on our list for the best of the year, uh, best best podcast ensemble for Atlantis After Dark. Um, I know what my vote is. Rigged. It's rigged. <laughs> it's not rigged. I want to read one of the votes. Me. There's two ensembles, and nobody votes for men. <laughs> <laughs> it's the There's sirens. Actually, it is the sirens. Sirens of Atlantis have been one of our most popular episodes, if not our most popular episode to date, and it's still getting hits to this day. So, um, once again, congratulations are in order to them. They worked hard, and it shows. Uh, if you guys worked harder, you guys could get a better rating on the show. That's just what I'm saying. That, that sounds exhausting. <laughs> I just show up. See? You just show up. That's what... <laughs> no, in all seriousness, um, I've I've loved doing this with you guys all through 2020. Um, and um, speaking of which, we've got one more bit to bring you. Um, I tried to get bonkers on here. But he's currently out of out of uh, scope. He's 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 busy. He says. Uh, I guess maybe he got work somewhere because I haven't heard from him. But we did get a bit in from this new guy. Um, he calls himself Doctor Jonathan Crane. Do you guys want to hear it? Yeah. Let's do Hell it. yeah. All right. All right. So here it is, Doctor Jonathan Crane. Welcome. I'm Doctor Jonathan Crane, the master of fear here for Atlantis after dark. Pull up a chair and mix yourself a drink. You can be sure I am. I will be discussing the scariest subjects in our world as DC Legends players. Today, I will be pontificating on a terrifying possibility that keeps me up drinking at night. It's even more frightening than a siege board full of owls, an empty bottle of gin, or a perfectly aged bourbon with a Gotham City water ice cube. What could be so petrifying, you ask? How about the horrifying reality that the DC Legends devs could introduce a character level 90 or even 100. <laughs> Hold on. I need to mix another drink. I recently got my 100th DCL character to max level 80. And I shiver to think of the resources and time needed to start that grind above that level. It reminds me of a never-ending raid featuring yours truly and my minions. <laughs> but time for another drink. What's next? Ring level 10? Because we all know how fucking flush we are with blue rings. Wait, 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 wait. Minions, edit that out. <laughs> Let's not give those devs any ideas. Speaking of ideas, how about quote unquote fucking coming soon nodes nine and 10 of PVE before you start hammering us with level 90 and 100? Minions, tequila now. Well, that's all the time we have for today. This is. Dr. Jonathan Crane for Atlantis After Dark. Time to get back to drinking and to trying to forget these spine-chilling fears that hang over our heads. See what I did there? In the frightening world 
of DC Legends. Well, I'll tell you what. I sure hope that guy doesn't do house calls. Maybe he's a roomie with bonkers. Who knows? I don't know. He sounds like my kind of therapist. (laughs) We know you need a therapist. Good grief almighty. And a financial Um, advisor. (laughs) A financial advisor. Well, we, we look forward to hearing a lot more from Dr. Jonathan Crane. Maybe he and Bonkers can do a bit at some point, or maybe he can, uh, maybe we can have Dr. Jonathan Crane interview people. That would be fun to do, too. I think um, Dr. Jonathan Crane needs to console Bonkers. Maybe. Maybe, that, <laughs> maybe that's something that needs to happen. We'll, we'll see about making that work. <laughs> Help each other out. So this is the very last regular segment of Atlantis After Dark that we're ever going to have for the year Um, Because our next episode is going to be our Atlantis After Dark holiday special. And we certainly hope you will all enjoy it. It's going to be an all-out extravaganza. We have some guest appearances and special things to celebrate all that is DCL. Uh, Before we give you a sneak peek at our our intro for that show, I do want to take some time to talk about some of our favorite AAD moments thus far. And uh, we'll wrap it up by talking about the future of the show. Um, what are some of your guys' favorite moments from AAD so far? Do we have any uh, memorable bits or memorable segments? Man, did we talk, that, did we talk about hookers one time? We yeah. did talk about hookers. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. I like the hookers. <laughs> I like the, the fuck, Mary kill segment. And uh, yeah, I like when was, Joker came on. That was pretty cool. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, I like the Sirens episodes with some nice accents. <laughs> Indeed, I played that track back real slow, like it was nice. <laughs> BF, what I was, about you, man? I have a hard time picking, man. Uh, the whole thing has been great. the the in, The inception of it, the the behind the scenes, everything, the guests, sirens. Oh, oh, sirens! How we love you. <laughs> but but uh, Atlantis After Dark in general has just been been a lot of fun it's been a nice side project for the game reaching out oh, to the community yeah. i've i've enjoyed it a lot and i've enjoyed doing it with all you guys it's been it's been a fun fun ride it has it has and i know that uh 2021 is going to be even better um i know Don't that jinx the eight, no i'm not jinxing anything <laughs> buddy um because i know it's going to be great um all of the AAD staff have been really hard at work at bringing you a very special holiday episode. Um, and I want to take this time to thank everybody uh, who's had a hand in helping and, and helping this and helping make this podcast what it is today. Uh, I'm super appreciative and we couldn't do it without all of you. So um, I want to share this bumper intro for the holiday episode that I think is great. I, I think well, the rest of us think it's great too. Even though it really isn't holiday-esque, uh, it's going to open the show because I think it more accurately reflects the way I feel about our staff and the state of the show going forward. Plus, it's really fun. Here it is. Gathered together from the cosmic reaches of the universe, here in this great hall of justice, are the most powerful podcasters ever assembled. Super Beatus, Biff Man, Witty Amazon, Black Flash, Aqua Bear, dedicated to fun, entertainment, and quality podcasting everywhere. This is Atlantis After Dark. See, I couldn't be happier with this because I think we have the right team, the right creative minds on the job, and all I can say is that next year is going to be much better for this show. We've already got so many episodes booked. We got episodes booked into February at this point. Um, Yeah. And yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Um, I'm also going to be sharing a few more details in the future about our new project, which is called the Chris Truby Show, coming in January and we're all excited for that as well. Once you guys hear it, we know you will be too. We already have some exciting and thought-provoking guests lined up, so please stay tuned for more information on that. And seeing as our time is almost up, or actually a little bit over, 
Um, I'm going to take this around the horn. Um, BF, what say you? Got any final thoughts? Final thoughts. Let's see. Uh, it's the end of the year. So let's just say thank you to everybody in the Atlantean family, our council elders, our commanders, our uh, what, what a, we have a lot of tags, but there's a lot of good people who do a lot of good work over there that help make this thing run smoothly. And I'd say it's gone off without a hitch. So thank you to all of you. Your, your work is appreciated, and I hope everybody enjoys their holidays, end of the year, whatever it may be. And uh, Minimums waived. Hey. <laughs> Minimums waived. Beastie, any last words of wisdom out of you, buddy? Uh, you know, I will say this. If you are listening to this podcast and you are not part of an alliance or on Discord for this game, it opens up a whole new avenue for this game, and it really helps bring the game to life. And uh, if you've been playing for a long time, you're doing a disservice by not being involved in this community at that capacity. So do yourself a favor, find a good group of guys. And, you know, if the Atlanteans have a spot open, we'd love to have you. And, uh, yeah, I I, I want to say my game has definitely gone to a whole nother level since I've been with you guys. And I really appreciate all of you. Nice, nice. Thanks, Beastie. Mm-hmm. Beatus, you get the last word, buddy. What do you want to tell the people? Well, I want to be a little bit different and be serious for once. Twenty twenty has been a hell of a year, man. Uh, A lot of vaccines are starting to roll out. And I just want to remind people that wash your hands, social distance as a global community. We're going to get through this. I know people have lost loved ones. I know it's been an extremely hard year for everyone. So let's look forward to 2021. And I know we'll all get through it together. And like Beard said, if you need something to pass the time, man, come join Atlantis. Come have some fun. Be the stands with Kitty, and I'll see y'all next year. Word. And with that, uh, I'm going to echo everyone's sentiments. Uh, They said it better than I could. Uh, We're going to bring this episode to a close. We want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time to be with us today. Never miss an episode. Subscribe, drop some love with likes, stars, or high fives, and spread the word if you like what you hear. We depend on your word of mouth to grow, and we certainly appreciate our listeners for doing so. Um, Stay safe. Thank you once again, and thank you guys for a great first run. We'll see you next time for our holiday special right here on Atlantis After Dark. For Beatus, for Black Flash, and Beardly Beast, so long, everybody. If you would like to appear on the show, find us on Discord. Send a DM to the Frankensteiner Express, hashtag 5045. We look forward to hearing from you. And we're done. Ooh, I got a piss. (laughs) (laughs) You can hold it. Put a clothespin on it. (laughs) I got a Gatorade bottle. Whip it out of the car window. You'll be all right. (laughs) <laughs> beat, beat laboratory beat laboratory oh yeah the beat laboratory <laughs> good job gentlemen yes excellent yeah, job so-